Here he is. Let's listen. Important decision. We're very well crafted. And I think it will go a long way toward bringing our country together, which our country needs. And uh, they worked long, they worked hard, and frankly, they worked very quickly on something that will be spoken about 100 years from now and 200 years from now, extremely important. Essentially, you cannot take somebody out of a race because an opponent would like to have it that way. And it has nothing to do with the fact that it's the leading candidate, whether it was the leading candidate or a candidate that was well down on the totem pole, you cannot take somebody out of a race. The voters can take the person out of the race very quickly, but a court shouldn't be doing that, and the Supreme Court saw that very well. Hey, okay, we've been listening to Donald Trump, and we're going to continue to monitor as he takes questions from reporters there in Mar-a-Lago. Uh, we have been hearing him first and foremost uh, talk about the fact that he is obviously very pleased about the Supreme Court decision to uh, keep him on the ballot or prevent Colorado from taking him off the ballot and therefore other states as well because of the actions that he was involved with in and around January 6th. Um, then he veered into lots of other areas uh, where uh, we definitely have to fact check. Um, Daniel, I want to first just say the last thing he was talking about immigration, which of course has nothing to do with the Supreme Court decision today. Um, he said a number of things that I hope that you get into, one of which was 20 million people he believes are in this country. We don't have any evidence to back that up uh, and going on about the need for the president to use his executive um, authorities to quote unquote close the border. Um, there is an antiquated immigration system. Congress in a bipartisan way in the U.S. Senate tried to update it at least a little bit, and it was uh, killed because uh, the president did not want to give Joe Biden that political win. Uh, but let's start by talking, if you will, Daniel, about uh, the allegations with absolutely no evidence that he was making against President Biden, that he is behind all of the prosecutions that we are seeing, both on a federal and state level. There is absolutely no evidence to back that up. In fact, there are um, there is a special counsel to to provide not one but two layers of distance between the president and these investigations, and that's just on the federal level. Th that's correct. So the claim is false, e even in terms of those federal cases. There's no evidence that President Biden, you know, ordered or, or was behind these prosecutions. But the claim is 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 especially nonsensical when it comes to you know state and local cases. His civil lawsuit from uh, the New York Attorney General, uh, cases brought in Georgia and New York by local district attorneys. There is zero evidence whatsoever that President Biden has somehow orchestrated these. So it's just conjured out of thin air. I think that this, as many Trump speeches are, was kind of a where do you start kind of speech from a fact check perspective. You talked about immigration. He said, you know, I didn't need to go to Congress. I just, he suggested that he just shut the border uh, with his own executive authority. In fact, he tried in 2019 to impose mm -hmm. essentially an, an asylum ban on people crossing between ports of entry uh, from Mexico. And it was blocked by the courts. It was blocked by the Ninth Circuit. The Supreme Court uh, declined to lift that block. So the idea that he just did it so Biden can do it uh, is not true. He talked about a new, supposedly new category of crime called migrant crime. Th this is basically propaganda. There has always been some crime by immigrants. All of the data suggests that immigrants tend to commit crimes at lower rates than native-born Americans. And I think, Dan, it's, it's worth noting that in 2023, preliminary data published by the FBI shows that the U.S. is either at or around the lowest violent crime rate nationally since 1970. So this idea of a, a crime wave is nonsense. And then I'll just add quickly, he went, went through a bunch of his, his old favorites. So I defeated ISIS in four months. In fact, the caliphate, so-called caliphate, was liberated about two years into his tenure. He said he passed the largest tax cut in history. In fact, on a percentage basis, it's nowhere close to the Ronald Reagan uh, tax cut. Uh, he said there are people from insane asylums uh, all over the world coming across the border. He's provided zero evidence for this, even when I've directly asked his campaign. So false claim after false claim, as per usual. Daniel, thank you so much for being here uh, to, to provide that kind of fact-checking that only you can appreciate it. Uh, we're going to quickly talk to our panel, CNN's Manu Raju, Laura Barone Lopez of the PBS New NewsHour, Sungmin Kim of the Associated Press. I'm glad that one of the many things that Daniel just said was about this notion that President Biden can use his executive action. I had 
the Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas on yesterday, and I asked about any future executive action that they will use, and he made that point that Daniel did, that Donald Trump did um, use his the power of his pen without Congress, and the courts overturned him. Yeah, and look, in the senator who, the Republican senator who led that effort, the bipartisan bill that Donald Trump effectively killed, said that that deal needed to go into law to give Joe Biden the power to effectively close the border. He says that essentially what we are seeing in the last several months, that would not happen if that deal were to become law, but... That is obviously not the message that you're going to hear from Republicans and Trump, who came out and killed that even before it was even revealed. Yeah, I mean, there is the, the president and the White House is considering some type of executive action, which Sungmin has also reported. But I mean, again, it would likely face lawsuits from the progressive wing, from immigration advocates. And so uh, that's something that we're seeing the president try to more forcefully act on. But of course, it's not going to be without legal challenges. So, I mean, let's go back to uh, the reason why he gave this speech and the reason why we took him live, because there was a monumental Supreme Court decision that happened this morning directly about his ability to be on the ballot uh, for, uh, Repub for or generally speaking, but in the short term contests that are going to happen tomorrow. The Supreme Court says, yes, he can be on the ballot. Colorado was wrong to take him off. And then that was a, a sweeping decision. Sure, sure. And yes, a big decision or a big victory for President Trump. And listening to his remarks, I was really interested on how much of the of, of his remarks he spent focusing on the immunity case, which is kind of his next big legal hurdle that he'll be facing, aside from the hush money uh, pay payments, a criminal case starting in a couple of weeks, because that shows you where his mind is. He is really thinking about the fact that he that he is trying to make the case that that presidents, no matter what I what no matter what he does, is immune from for his for his official acts in office and that is just that goes to this whole legal strategy of how he's been trying to delay every single proceeding mm -hmm. possible obviously having the supreme court hear those arguments in the week of april 22nd delaying those federal cases further is part of that strategy and hopefully he's hoping that strategy takes him all the way through november and beyond yeah, yeah. In that immunity case, I mean, let's not forget what they argued in the D.C. Circuit, that the Donald Trump, if he were president and if the president ordered the execution of an opponent from SEAL Team 6, that he could not be prosecuted unless he were impeached by the House, convicted by the Senate, then the prosecution can actually occur. That's one level of argument that we'll see how his opponents take advantage of that if they do. And I think what's also been, also, is, is Trump comes out and rails against all the prosecutions. The the fact that Joe Biden has not said really anything about any of these criminal charges, they've tried to show that they had no involvement whatsoever. That has essentially created a vacuum of sorts, allowed Trump to come in and sort of define all these criminal charges of prosecutions against him as a political witch hunt. Will Joe Biden change that strategy yeah. as we head into November? Yeah. So we'll far, say. they're allowing the uh, their allies to do that, and he's trying to stay away from it. That's a good question. Will yeah. that change? Two other quick points on things that Trump said. On the migrant crime wave, which I know Daniel tackled, and there is no migrant crime wave occurring, I was just down at the border, and I spoke to some migrants that were coming across through the CBP-1 app that the administration has asked them to use. They were young mothers, 22-year-old mothers, who came alone with their children on this difficult journey and just were looking for this better life and trying to find jobs. And so that's on that. And then also uh, on him attacking prosecutors and judges, we've seen where this has led before, which is when he does that, they then uh, deal with death threats yes. and they also uh, are doxxed. And uh, it's a lot of impact on those prosecutors and the judges themselves. Yeah, very, very important points, all of them. Thank you so much for being here.